My name is Cornell, I'm the CEO and founder of Dot Lumen where we build glasses for the blind. I was actually born in a family where everybody but me has a disability. I'm the only person without a disability in my family and that showed me how much technology can help but also how little technology there is. And if you think there are 300 million people who are visually impaired in the world and you check what they use, they use the same two solutions for thousands of years. They use the white cane and they use the guide dog or the service dog as it's being called in the US. And now the dog is a great solution, but over its lifetime a single guide dog can reach $200,000 and there are very few of them in the world. And that's where we come in. We actually took self-driving technology and we built this self-driving car, but as you can see it's not a, a self-driving car which drives on the road, it's actually one which sits on your head to drive you to the pedestrian world. So this is actually designed to replicate what the guide dog is doing. So if a guide dog works by pulling your hand, this actually works by pulling your head, avoiding you from obstacles and keeping you safe. Does it have LiDAR? It has six cameras, LiDARs and other sensors as well. So this is actually tested by more than 500 blind people. It's coming on the market in just a few months and we are a team of over 50 engineers and scientists working on this for the last four Where years. Where are you based? We are based in Romania. And so let's see here. Can you describe what we see? Sure, we have six cameras and some LiDAR projectors over here, so the device can actually see directly near field and far field, so everything. So it's going down and straight? Down and straight, that is true. And, and three yeah, plus three, three? Three, three plus three and some infrared emitters to, uh, to better understand in uh, low contrast or in low, in low lighting conditions. Can you describe what each of them do? Uh, not really. I mean, yes, obviously we use them in stereo pairs to see, to use stereo vision. Uh, some of them are infrared, some of them are RGB all of that and then there's a there's a battery here and here we have battery and processing everything we do so everything a self-driving car does we do it over here in in this very very small place so this is actually everything a tesla does in autopilot but we're able to squeeze it in we have a supercomputer here the same computing power as tesla autopilot and is it like a nvidia yes it is nvidia we work with nvidia so directly. it's a really cool uh vision engine yep on board yeah, high performance. Yeah, everything happening here on the edge. No internet connectivity required. And uh, what is this? This, this, this is tidying? Actually, this is actually to uh, tighten and I tighten the device in order to make it more comfortable. Nice. Is this, uh, so what is the stage now? When is the mass production? Three months. The device is coming on the market in roughly three months. And are you saying that the whole design is being tested right now? Over 500 blind people have been testing it for years. How good is it? It changes lives. I want to quote one of our blind testers, expected something like this to be possible, but not during our lifetime. That's the kind of feedback we're getting about this. So, I, I, without knowing what you do, is there like some audio kind of feedback or uh, what does it do to help them navigate? As I mentioned before, we use haptics. So if you think of the guide dog, the guide dog works by pulling your hand. This actually works by pulling your head. We have an array of haptics over here, which actually pulls your hand. Sorry, I will not give you too much details about ah, that. Sorry, that's not Yeah. Uh, so there's actually, haptics. Yes, you actually feel haptics. It's guiding on your you with like little. Like, yes, pull, pulling your head, guiding you in the direction where you have to go. So if a guide dog bring, bring, uh, pulls your hand, this actually pulls your head. That's how it works. That's amazing. But Is also there any other, audio feedback. other triggers? Could you give audio triggers? We also give audio triggers, but we minimize how much audio we give because audio is very, very intrusive. Blind people use their hearing a lot in order to understand the environment. So we don't want to be intrusive. This is why we rely on haptics. It's so much more intuitive, so much faster, and uh, it simply, simply works. Audio we do in order to augment information, to offer some, for example, if you want to go on stairs, we say stairs up, stairs down, curb up, curb down, stuff like that we do with the device. But otherwise we minimize the amount of audio. Also, the device can teach you how to use it using audio feedback. So we have built-in tutorials which teach you and test you on how you use the device. Would it make sense to have also a haptic glove or something extra? We test it all over the body. So we tested all areas of the body. Nothing is as intuitive as the head because we are used to having the sensing on the head and everything and this is why we decided to make it on the head because it's simply the most intuitive thing which we can do. Nice, so the front of the head. Yeah. I was thinking one time that there could be something on the tongue that's like what, one kind of a, machine on the tongue or something. Does a blind it exist? Person, a blind person is already blind, you don't want to make them mute. There was a company before who was trying to do an array on the tongue in order to represent obstacles and to represent what they see. That is unfortunately that failed. Um, the reason is if you want to represent the environment, uh, to, if you want to represent visual information to a non-visual way, so if you have obstacles to hear them or to feel them on a, on a vest or on your tongue, the world is way too complex, you'll get to sensory overload, you'll not be able to use it. 
this doesn't tell you what obstacles you have. This directly guides you around them. So the analogy is the guide dog. If the guide dog, if I have five people in front of a guide dog, the guide dog will not bark five times. No, it will actually guide me away from them. The same with the device. It simply guides you and takes care of you. You could potentially combine it with the guide dog. Guide dog. You could, but it would be a similar functionality. What we want to do is to offer the same functionality the guide dog has to all of the all the other people who cannot have a guide dog. Again, there are just 28,000 guide dogs in the world to 300 million people who could have one. Let's say I walk towards the wall, what is the feedback? It will directly avoid you from it, so it will not allow you to get there. You will actually feel the device bringing you away from it. That's amazing. Uh, I'll send you some videos so you can actually see this. And uh, so you said 200 million, 300 million? 300 million people are either blind, either severely visually impaired. How soon can you get to like I'm not going to say 300 million people, but millions of people. So How, basically, what with, with each year, we are making it smaller and smaller. So right now, we want to make it smaller and smaller and cheaper and cheaper. That's our goal. So by the first, this is first generation. Third generation is a mass market product, which we hope to get to over 100,000 people. And you could have Bluetooth and have, if people want more accessories, to kind that of add true. it, right? So we, we do connect with other things as well, but our core function is to like have a one ring device for just everything. Not many use cases. Not many use cases for that one. Our core is mobility, and we do it in one single device, uh, and we're always making it smaller and smaller. But we, we, we can do some more things. For example, right now you can use a smartphone to, to, to um, command it. So for example, if you want to go to a faraway place, you just go on Google Maps, find a location, press share, and share it to the glasses, and the glasses will take you there. Nice. And they use accessibility feature in the Google Maps? Uh, to you, figure out I mean, to, do, to use it? They use whatever it's in the voice. phone, like voiceover and stuff like that, in order to find the location, then they press share, and the device takes over from there. Maybe there are some situations where you want audio, yeah. because you want to have more resolution, okay. to understand more, and then you turn it off. You know, you have a lot of options, so you can configure it. There are a lot, a lot of options for the user, uh, but I think we found a pretty good sweet spot, and the sweet spot is to minimize audio as much as possible. How much is going to cost? It's a medical device, so every country is a bit different because it's reimbursed for blind people we're making it be free or very very low cost so for example in Romania this will go out for free how long time you've been working on this project four years we're working for four years and we're a team of more than 50 people now all in Romania all in Romania in uh, Bucharest uh, not in Bucharest in Cluj the second biggest city but yeah and how much AI it's, is happening in the, in the, all in the powered in by development AI. of this it's power half by AI, half by traditional computer science and computer vision. Can you also use the cloud somehow? No. Or you want to do everything really. offline? We want to do everything here because you wouldn't go in a self-driving car which relies on internet connectivity. This is a self-driving car for the blind. We do everything on the edge. One thing the self-driving cars do is that they learn from other users Likewise. on the road. Could you do that also yes, by, by sharing the data? We share data among devices, yes. So they learn that uh, you better not go this way, that way, or not something? Not only that, but there are some specifics of things which you can learn. But I wouldn't dwell too much on that now because it's a bit confidential. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.